Hi everyone. In today's lecture, we are going to cover uh, the generation of amplitude modulated wave using switching modulator. So before going to the generation of amplitude modulated wave using switching gen uh, switching modulator, so what is amplitude modulation? And uh, what is the time domain description? What is the frequency domain description of uh, amplitude modulator wave? Completely, I have made uh, the videos and which I'm going to keep it in the description. You can see what is uh, amplitude modulation in that. So before going to the switching modulator, uh, I would like to give the definition of the amplitude modulated wave. So amplitude modulation by definition is nothing but the amplitude of the carrier is varied in accordance with the amplitude of the message signal. That means a carrier which is not having any information is varied in accordance with your message signal. Let us see how many types of uh, uh, generation, uh, how many ways we can generate uh, the amplitude modulated wave. So there are mainly two types of modulators here two types of modulators to generate your AM wave. One is the square law modulator and the other is your switching modulator. So in this lecture, we are going to cover what is a switching modulator. Now let us see. So this is the block diagram of your switching modulator. You can see that we are using a summer. We are using a summer to which we are giving the message signal, which is a low frequency signal, and we are giving a carrier as the other input to the summer. So the output of the summer here, we are representing it using your V1 of T, and this V1 of T is passed through a switching diode. Switching diode, which is a nonlinear uh, device. So the output, whatever we are going to get, uh, that is we are representing here as V2 of T. So this V2 of T contains some unwanted signals. So we'll be using a bandpass filter to remove the unwanted signal or to uh, generate only the desired signal. That means my bandpass signal, bandpass filter is going to filter out the unwanted signal and gives the output as a only the desired signal. So what are the conditions we need to we need to have before uh, uh, when we go for the switching modulator is that we should make sure that the modulation index should be less than or equals to 1 and the fc should be always greater than w so then we can generate the amplitude modulated wave then one more important point is that like your switching diode or in your switching modulator the diode has to operate in as an ideal switch means uh, it should be like an on off switch it is an ideal switch means during the positive half cycle it will be on and during the negative half cycle it will be off so let us see uh, the circuit diagram for this one so if you look at the circuit diagram uh, we are giving a message signal and a carrier signal to a summer whatever i said so that is nothing but v1 of t which we are giving uh, as an input uh, to your diode where your diode is acting as an ideal switch uh, and this output uh, uh, whatever we collect that is v2 of t which is passed to your bandpass filter to get your desired signal now let us uh, see how uh, mathematically we can represent and uh, we can generate uh, the uh, amplitude modulated signal so let us consider so let the modulating and carrier signals to be denoted as your m of t and c uh, c of t which is nothing but c of t is nothing but ac cos of 2 pi fct respectively that means we to give the input uh, to your switching modulator we are taking a message signal and a high frequency carrier signal so these two signals are applied as an input to your summer block summer block means here so to the summer block we are giving the input uh, and that produce an output which is the addition of modulating and carrier signal. So what it is doing? My V1 of T, mathematically V1 of T is nothing but M of T plus C of T. So this M of T 
plus c of t is written as m of t. We are expanding c of t as ac cos of 2 pi of ct. So this is what uh, we get at the input of your diode. That is v1 of t is nothing but m of t plus ac cos of 2 pi of ct. So once we are giving the input to the nonlinear device, then at your nonlinear non device, as it is acting as an ideal switch, yeah, and let us see what is the output we are going to get uh, during a positive and negative half cycles. So this signal V1 of T is applied as an input to the diode. So assumes the magnitude of the modulating signal is very small when compared to the amplitude of your carrier signal. So it is assuming that the magnitude of your modulating signal is small when compared to that of your carrier signal uh, that is AC. So so the diode will be on and off action is controlled by carrier signal C of T. So your carrier signal is going to control the on and off of your diode, uh, uh, what we are using in your circuit. So this means the diode will be in the forward biased condition. That is, it will be forward bias. When, when my diode is in the forward bias, whatever is there at your input side, uh, that will be present at your uh, output side. That is, when c of t is greater than zero at this condition whatever the input we are giving that will be present at your output side as your diode is forward biased and uh, it will be in the reverse bias when it will be in the reverse bias when c of t is less than zero that means uh, the diode will be off and uh, you'll be getting an output of zero here that means v2 of t will be equals to zero when your c of t is less than uh, zero and V2 of T is equals to V1 of T. It will be equals to V1 of T uh, when your diode is in the forward bias, that is C of T is greater than zero. So this is the action of your uh, diode when we operate in the ideal, uh, ideal mode or uh, when the diode acts as an ideal switch. Now, let us see mathematically how we can represent uh, the same V2 of T. So the output of the diode, that means here, the V2 of T. So the V2 of T, what you are going to get is V2 of T is equals to V1 of T for the condition that is C of T is greater than zero. That means when the diode is in the, when C of T is greater than zero, the diode will be forward biased and uh, the output will be whatever we are giving at the input side, the same thing will be presenting at your output side. Now, when C of T is less than zero, that means at the time your diode will be reverse bias and you'll be getting an output of zero here. So this is the mathematical representation of the output of your uh, diode. So which can be approximated. I want to make it a time varying function. Your V2 of T, I want to make it as a time varying function. So which I'm approximating the above equation. I'm rewriting it as V2 of T is equals to V1 of T into X of T. So here V1 of T is nothing but M of T plus AC cos of 2 pi of CT, whatever the output of your summer you are having. And X of T, here X of T is nothing but, it's a periodic pulse strain with a time period of T is equals to 1 by FC. So when I multiply, what is this uh, periodic pulse strain? How it looks like? Let us see now. So when I look at the periodic pulse strain, so it looks like this. So, which is having a time period uh, of uh, T from here to, let us take uh, from here to here, it is nothing but your time period, what we have mentioned, that is 1 by FC, 1 by FC, okay. So, this periodic function, how we are representing in the form of uh, Fourier series. So, if I want to represent the periodic function, so that can be represented in the Fourier series as X of T is equals to 1 by 2 plus 2 by pi sigma n is equals to 1 to infinity and minus 1 to the power of n minus 1 by 2 n minus 1 cos of 2 pi 2 n minus 1 into F C T. So this is the Fourier series representation of your periodic function. So when I expand this equation, when I expand this equation, 
that is n by taking the value of your n is equals to 1, 2, 3, and so on. So x of t is equals to 1 by 2 plus 2 by pi cos of uh, 2 pi f c t, that is when your n is equals to 1. And when your n is equals to 2, then it is already n is equals to 2, it is min, uh, sorry, minus 2 by 3 pi cos of 6 pi f c t and n is equals to 3, you will get uh, the higher order terms, n is equals to 4 and so on. You will be getting the periodic uh, uh, signal equation. So what we need to do is, if we look at the output v2 of t, we have written it as uh, v1 of t into x of t. So now we are going to substitute. We are going to substitute both uh, v1 of t and x of t into your equation 2. That is the output v2 of t can be represented as v1 of t. This is v1 of t that is m of t plus ac cos of 2 pi f c t into your x of t. This is your x of t. So uh, v1 of t into your x of t. Now if I multiply the terms, I will be getting the v2 of t as m of t by 2 plus ac by 2 cos of 2 pi f c t plus 2 m of t by pi into cos 2 pi f c t plus 2 a c by pi cos square 2 pi f c t minus 2 by 3 m of t, oh, sorry, 2 m of t by 3 pi cos 6 pi f c t minus 2 by 3 a c by pi cos of 2 pi f c t cos of 6 pi f c t and so on. So we are uh, limiting the terms. Why? Because the higher order terms uh, have a frequency which is uh, the uh, double or uh, it will be more than the carrier frequency fc. That is, let us see here, if it is cos of 6 pi fct, it is nothing but uh, 4 fc is the frequency. So here also it is a 4 fc is a frequency. So higher uh, frequencies, anyhow, we are going to uh, eliminate using your band pass filter. So we are uh, limiting the com uh, terms within the equation v, uh, v2 of t. So now, uh, if you look at this equation, if you look at this equation, if I rearrange the terms, if I rearrange the terms, now let us see here the first, uh, the second term, that is ac by 2 cos of 2 pi f c t and 2 m of t by pi cos 2 pi f c t. I am taking here ac by 2 here ac by 2 and cos 2 pi f c t as common. So when I take like that from these two terms, from these two terms, I'll be getting ac by 2 into 1 plus 4 by pi ac m of t into cos 2 pi f c t from these two terms. And remaining terms we'll write as it is, that is m of t by 2, we are writing as it is. And 2 ac by pi cos square 2 pi f c t, we are writing as it is and uh, 2 m of t by 3 pi cos 6 pi f c t and uh, 2 a c by 3 pi cos of 2 pi f c t into cos of 6 pi f c t we are writing as it is. Now the output whatever we got from the uh, diode that uh, as we have said if you are passing it through a uh, band pass filter. So what is my band pass filter is going to do is it will be uh, removing uh, the unwanted signals. What are the unwanted signals? These terms from here to here, these are the unwanted signals. So it will only pass the desired signal, this one. It will pass only the desired signal. So what is this desired signal looking like? Let us see now. So if you analyze, if you analyze, so V2 of t, what are the equation we have written? Again, I'm writing here. So first term, first term, if you see here, this is the desired signal. And uh, these are your unwanted components. So the first term in the above equation uh, represents the desired AM wave. And uh, the remaining uh, terms are your unwanted terms. Uh, thus, <clears throat> with the help of your band pass filter, we can pass only the AM wave and uh, eliminating the remaining terms. When I pass it uh, through the band pass filter, only this will be the output and remaining will be blocked. Now, 
let us compare that with the standard equation. If you compare that one with the standard equation, so the output, whatever we got at the bandpass filter, that is S of T is equals to AC by 2 into 1 plus 4 by pi AC M of T into cos 2 pi F C T. Now, this is the signal what we have generated. That if I'm comparing with your standard equation, AC into 1 plus K M of T into cos 2 pi F C T. So, here your AC, sorry, 4 uh, 4 by pi AC, which is equals to your Ka, that is amplitude sensitivity. So, the amplitude sensitivity is given as 4 by uh, pi AC and it is having a scaling factor of 0. 0.5. It is having a scaling factor of 0. 0.5. So, this is how we are going to generate the amplitude modulated wave using your switching modulator. So, in the next lecture, we will see uh, how to generate uh, the AM wave using your square, uh, square, uh, square law modulator. Thank you.